So let's talk about this first MATLAB assignment, or graded assignment number one. Now, we'll have an MLX that we've created, and we can just come down and create a new one. And then when we go to save it, we'll give it a name. Keep in mind that until you save things, they are what we would call volatile. So save early and prevent loss. So here's a section. You see it's grayed out. It's a section. In the assignment that you have, the instructions have some verbiage that I want to focus on. So one of the things we're going to need to do is come up to insert and insert some text. And I can just put text in there. And the text that I put in there just so happens to be text from the assignment directions. So it says your file should contain a title, table of contents, some meaningful text, and the code required to demonstrate the function functionality that's described above in the instructions, structured into meaningful sections and in individual headings. Might have images, links, references, whatever it may be. This same structure will hold true for all of the MATLAB assignments. Not the onboards or the on-ramps, but when you're actually going in and completing the tasks in MATLAB, um, there's an expectation that you're going to have a clean, concise, coherent structure. So here's an example of a prior submission. They gave it a title, who's involved in it, when it was created, what's the goal of this, what are the objectives. Did I have to cite somebody else's content? Um, and a table of contents that links down to other sections. So if I clicked this section, it takes me to that section. Okay. So let's go back and look at our blank script, as you will. Let's, let's create a table of contents. And in our table of contents, you know, I'm going to want I want other things in here and I'm going to want some code but let's go in see what can we put into our table of contents well if we look back at the other one this one had links to content in there. So, there's my table of contents. Um, let's say I'm going to create a new section. All right. I'm going to go to insert a section break. So now here's a delineation between my table of contents and whatever's up above it and this lower section and we see this is a code block I know I'm gonna code down there but you know I want to put some text in there first and we call it section one I take that section one and I'm gonna to go to my live editor 
Now here's where I can format my text. I'm going to call it heading 1. Okay. I'm going to go insert another section. Copy this. Call it section 2. Formatting didn't carry over, but that's okay. Go back to Live Editor. Make that heading one as well. So I'm building this table of contents that we had here. Now, above the table of contents, I've got some text. I'll say title. Authors, title, let's call it a title. Authors, normal text, normal text in this table of contents. So when we think about title, table of contents, some meaningful text, all the code required, down in section one, I want to insert some code Section 2, I'll insert some code. See the logical structure, this clean formatting coming into creation for what we've done. Now let's say you've already looked at this solely from a functional perspective. You disregarded this and you said, you know, I'm going to do what he told me to do. Now I'm all about function first, form second. So if you've got the function knocked out, you can take your function and code and put it down below, explain what took place, the different things that are going on. If you've got different files, instructions for somebody that's running it. Now in this section, I can give directions on what they need to do. And then they come down and actually do it. Okay. Whatever's taking place, explain it. Okay. Don't assume that at a glance we will know everything that's taking place. All right. So with that said, MLX file. That's what we created here. Title we created here. Table of contents is what's created here. Meaningful text down in a section. Put another here. Put meaningful text anywhere in there. So, and now it's asking me do I want to save it. When we come here, name, who, what's our goal, what are our objectives, what's going on, what types and steps are taking place. So I'm hoping that at this point, this brief little paragraph that means a lot is not word for word included in your submission, but conceptually these tasks are completed. Now, in that example that I showed you, there was a reference to somebody else's work. In the past, I've mentioned this concept. Now, in programming, we don't have to recreate the wheel. If somebody else created a wheel or some code, I can use that as long as I'm free to use it, one, and two, I note where it came from and that I'm not presenting it as something I created. So in that example that I showed you, that group specifically cited their source. Some of the code within their submission had a link to somebody else's work. And within the code 
they were specific to say we noted above that we were inspired by this individual's work this section of code came directly from that individual's work there's no plagiarism there if they had access to that individual's work freely and they cited it I have no problem with that okay, it's not unlike you using a print statement in Python you didn't create the print statement somebody created that that function but we can use it we don't have to cite using a print function but if we're using somebody else's work we do need to reference it okay so with that said I'll wrap this up and if there's any questions reach out have a great weekend